So let's look at program control structures. What controls the structure of our programs? So the order in which statements are executed in order to solve a particular problem is the program control. So we distinguish different structures, sequential, decision and looping. So let's look at these in a little bit more detail. So sequential control flow is what it says. It's a set of statements that is executed sequentially, one after another. So on the slide you see an example of four statements that are being executed in the exact order that they are put on the slide. One, two, three and four. So we first assign a variable hours worked yeah, from some input we get from the keyboard. Then we assign a variable pay rate also with some input from the keyboard. And then we multiply the two variables, save the, the result in another variable that we in the fourth statement print. So you see here a sequence of statements. And it's good to note this semicolon here that in most programming languages always marks the end of a program language statement. So it indicates sequentially the statements that need to be executed. Here's another example of a sequential program. So we assign 2 to A, we assign 3 to B, we add B and A, we store the result in C, and we subtract uh, B minus A, and we store the result in D. So one statement after another. So you can imagine that this is not enough to program, because sometimes the statements that we want to execute depend on certain circumstances. So for that we need decision structures that indicates if that's true, then do something, and if it's not true, do something else. For that we use decision structures that indicate which statement we will execute depending on certain conditions. So for example, here we see if a condition is true, we execute sequentially these three statements, and if this condition is false, we go that way. We apply these things in daily life too. Is it cold outside? Yes. Well then I'm going to wear a coat, I'm going to wear a hat and I'm going to wear a scarf. If not, I'm going to do something else. So these are decision structures. In programming, the most basic decision structure is called the if statement. If this is true, then I do that. And if it's not true, I'll do something else. So the, cement, the syntax you can see here, it's a keyword if, that is followed by some boolean expression, meaning an expression that results in a boolean, true or false, and a set of statements that is being executed when the boolean expression is true. So this is the semantics of the if statements. If the boolean expression is true, then the statements that follow will be executed, and if not, the statements are skipped. So here's an example of uh, an if statement when we for example want to calculate the grade of a student if a student score is uh, greater or equal to 90 and the student score is less than or equal to 100 the grade of the student is an A if the student score is greater or equal than 80 but less or equal than 89 then the student score is a B so we see we use if statement to decide what the outcome of our uh, code is. Another uh, decision structure is case or switch statements. So this is a statement that offers you the possibility to choose from different options. So we can also model this with a series of if statements, but it's, it's nicer and more compact to do it with a switch statement. So here we see an example. In the case that the grade is one of these, then we do different things. If it's an A, then the result is pass. If it's a B, it's pass. If it's a C, it's also pass. If it's a D, it's a pass, but it's not so good, but we don't program this in this, in this part. And if it's an F, it's a fail. So this is another decision structure to make your code go where you want it to go based on specific conditions and decisions.
We also have looping statements for control structures, but we'll see that in the next video.